I do feel like I have a lot of valuable content on my YouTube, but, but I've never actually made a specific video for beginners. So that is what this video is. I'm gonna hop right in with tip number one, which is this is about you. So stop comparing yourself to anybody else. We could literally all eat the exact same. We could train the exact same. We could sleep the exact same and we could recover the exact same, but we will not all look or perform the exact same way. With that being said, I recommend finding a schedule that fits you perfectly. Whether that's two days a week of training or three days a week of training, figure out what works for you. I did this math in another YouTube video a couple weeks ago if you want to go watch it, but you would be a lot better off showing up consistently to the gym two to three days a week for a full year rather than five to six days a week inconsistently for a couple weeks and then take a couple weeks off and then consistent for a couple weeks. So you do you and find what's consistent for you. Okay? Tip number two is to always have a plan. I will say this, very, very rarely should you show up to the gym without a plan. That is a rookie mistake. Specifically when you're new to the gym, you definitely want a plan, whether that's following someone's workout program, like mine, meeting with a coach, You'd go to the doctor to get advice on one thing or you'd go to a nutritionist for advice on one thing. There's a lot of fitness professionals on the backside and that is their job, okay? For sure, if you have time, you can learn how to do things on your own. Whatever it is, just have a plan figured out before you show up. But I promise you, you're gonna get better results if you plan everything and stay consistent. And then also you're probably gonna enjoy it better because I swear to God, some of my worst gym experiences are from years ago when I would show up, no plan. I would get there and I would just be like, not only not motivated for anything, but I didn't really know what I should be doing. So I kind of just like dick around a little bit, but the whole time I just kind of like knew that I wasn't doing what I was supposed to be doing. All right, tip number three for my gym beginners, get a gym uniform. That means shoes and clothes because if you joined like a soccer team you would get cleats you would get the right socks you would get the right shorts you would get the outfit that allows you to be comfortable and perform your best so I don't see why the gym would be any different now I promise I'm not saying you need to go spend like hundreds of dollars I would say just have one outfit from top to bottom that you feel really good in now as for shoes I just quickly want to give the tip that a pair of like runners or little tennis shoes can be great. And if you're running, if you're doing high intensity, upper body days, whatever, really cool. Something that has kind of like a more cloudy, pillowy bottom to them. They look cute and they're really great for those types of sessions. But if you're looking to invest, in like a lifting shoe. So take like the Nike Metcon for instance. It's a little bit wider on the bottom. It's a flat sole. These are gonna be really helpful for days that you are deadlifting or you're squatting. They give you a stable base so you can be strong all the way up. If you're interested in some shoe reviews on my part, I have two shoe videos that I will link below that I go through most, if not all of my gym shoes. And then the second thing I wanna say is that when in doubt, wear a tennis shoe and then you can take your shoes off so you can just lift in your socks or your bare feet to give that like stable feeling. So don't feel like you need to go out of your way to purchase something. I say treat the gym like it is your sport. You're gonna enjoy it. Buy a uniform that feels really fucking good for you. All right, I'm at the gym and I wanna say the fourth tip now that we've made it here is walking or running or really any cardio is not a warm up. Like in some ways it can be added to a warm up and some forms of cardio are better. For instance, like the stair stepper, we've got our hips, we've got our knees, we've got our ankles working. That could definitely be integrated into a warm up to prep your joints. But if you're going for performance and injury prevention, you're definitely gonna wanna run through a warm up that includes not only preparation for your mind, but also your body. Ideally, it would mimic movement patterns that you're gonna be incorporating in the actual workout that day. And you should leave the warm up feeling way better than before. I'm gonna show you really quickly a general full body warm up that you could add to any full body session. Just know though, the more specific you get, the better your results are gonna be. So if you want something to follow, I have all of my programs include really cool warm ups that prep you for the specific sessions. But if you're new and you're just looking for something, this is a perfect place to start. We're gonna start with some foam rolling. I would pick about 40 to 45 seconds, each muscle group that you pick. Of course, do both sides. 
and you don't need to be foam rolling for like more than five minutes really i like foam rolling i feel like it's a really nice technique kind of take the brakes off of your mind and let your body know it's time to get to work after that we want to get in some corrective movements or kind of wake up our muscle groups that are important for injury prevention and again this would be different for every single person that i would train but for the purpose of this video i'm just going to show you two movements you could put in one is a super simple hip thrust variation and then the other is going to be a dead bug hold where you just radiate as much tension as you can making sure that your knee is at a 90 degree angle your toes are flexed up at a nice 90 degree angle and you want to see how much tension you can you can create in your entire body if you still have the roller i, I like to use this to kind of teach your body how tight you can get so place it on your forearms and literally push as hard as you can into the roller you'll know what i'm talking about in that moment you could do both of these for about 30 seconds at a time and just do two or three rounds of alternating between those two and you could roll over get some t-spine rotations Think of tapping the floor lightly and opening up straight to the ceiling, following with your eyes. You should feel a nice stretch in your upper to mid back, which is something that's super neglected. And then after all of that, we wanna get a little bit of power work in to let our body know like, all right, we are we're easing into the hard stuff. So I like a power movement for this block. And then also you want to pick a movement that's gonna mimic your main movement of the day. So I'm showing you a squat variation right now. I'm gonna repeat this circuit two to three, maybe four times, depending on how I feel that day. Um, the more advanced Advanced you get in the gym, you will understand that for injury prevention and just for performance benefits, your warm up should be around 10 minutes. It doesn't need to be much more, but any less, you're probably going to notice a difference in a negative way. So I hope that this helps. Tip number five is to learn the basic movement patterns. Different coaches use different types of movement patterns, but for the most part, the main ones are going to be your squat, hinge, push, pull, and locomotion, like walks, carries, a lot of core work. I'm going to quickly go through a little speed teaching. My biggest disclaimer is all movement patterns can look slightly different from person to person based on your anatomy, so these are just quick tips. All right, let's start with squatting. Squatting is a knee dominant movement for the most part. Meaning out of all of our lower body joints, our knees are doing a lot of the work, okay? I'm going to drive my knees out to the side. Watch out for knees coming in. We don't want that. Drive them out. Our back stays neutral. It's totally allowed to be bent over forward as long as the entire spine is moved together. So I'm not hunched over like this. But if I need, of course, I can be here. I can also be here. That looks different for everyone. The next movement pattern we're gonna go over is lunging, which is just like a single leg squat. Of course, there's a million variations of lunges, same with squats, same with every other movement pattern I go over. But for the sake of this video, I'm just going over basics. You could be stepping back, you could step forward. Regardless though, think of keeping your feet in line with your hips when you step back, rather than being on like a tight rope. So you don't want your feet on the same road. You want them in different lanes, okay? Like they're cars driving with each other. Keep them in their own lane. All right, next movement pattern is pulling or rowing. Kind of just bringing something to your body. Again, keep in mind that there's so many variations of different rows and pulls, different grips you could use, different weights you could use. I'm just gonna show you guys a dumbbell row. My biggest tip with pulling and rowing variations is to let your shoulder move freely. So let it row forward and let it row all the way back. Okay. Forward, all the way back. Sometimes I see rows like people keep the weight super close up here and your shoulder blade just stays down the whole time. You don't want to do that. Look at the difference from this to this. Much, much better. Guys, I'm in the middle of doing my own workout right now. I'm like working this in between some of my sets. Not super efficient right now, but I'm out of breath. So let's talk about the next movement pattern, which is pushing. It could be a push-up, this could be a bench press. Of course, there's pushes like above your head, vertical pushing, horizontal pushing. I'm gonna show you guys the push-up really quickly, which I actually do also have a push-up 101 video, which I will link below. See guys, I got a lot of videos for you to watch. I'm gonna show you. Kind of get your hands set into the floor. Think of screwing your hands in. Get set, let your body move all together. So I don't want just your chest going down or just your lower body going down. Let everything move as one together and then push away. I am so sweaty right now. Okay, let's go over the hinge. So hinges, think of like deadlifts. Hinging is referring to a hip hinge, meaning it is a hip dominant movement. So unlike with the squat that is knee dominant, we're working hip dominant. This was that squat, was that knee, knee, knee. The hip hinge is very 
hip, hip, hip. Okay. Same idea for the most part. Again, not always, but for the most part when we're lifting load, as long as you have a straight and neutral spine, you could be hinging like this. You could also hinge with a little bit of a knee bend. Everyone's deadlift is gonna look a little bit different. Majority of the movement is from your hips hinging. So if you're here, if your hips are below your knee, odds are you're squatting. So guess when you're deadlifting, one of my favorite cues for those hinging patterns is to pretend like you have lemons in your armpits and you're squeezing them. So although our hip hinge is very lower body dominant, we have a lot of our core working and a lot of our back working. I hope that made sense. I'll definitely need to go into more detail someday for like a full deadlift video. So let me know if you wanna see that. Okay, I'm gonna multitask while I do my wall sit. Okay. The next and last movement pattern that we're gonna go over is locomotion. So kind of just think of like any other movement, like you're walking, whether we're going front, or we're going back, we're going side to side, we're running, we're jogging, we're skipping, like any other motion kind of where we're just moving around, that's locomotion. And that is one of the most functional movement patterns because most of us do that every single day. So when you're in the gym training, locomotion, typically that would be walking, jogging, running, sprinting, um, or carries. But locomotion really is just being able to get your body from one spot to another safely. Oh, my God. oh bro, my legs are fried. All right, tip number six. I wanna talk about the pins, setting for the right height for like squatting or benching. And then I also wanna show you guys how to use clips. When we have the bar racked on our back, for like a back squat or reverse lunge or if we're working front squat or something ideally the rack height should be just about your armpit if it's lower than that you're gonna be like squatting the bar up and if it's too high you're gonna have to lift your heels up to get the bar off and we don't want either of those so if i walked up to this i'm not gonna squat for this ideally like top of armpit closer to top of shoulder is where you want it so i know this is too low i'm gonna start by taking the bar off bada boom and then most gyms have similar racks, so you're just gonna literally tilt it out and then pull it out. Also, I'm gonna count them. I know my height, but this also will help when you're at the gym. I would start at the top and kind of count down, I'm like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I know on this bench, I'm about at nine. Push it back in, let it fall. I like to count so that way you know it's even. I'm just gonna show you up close how to use the clip. It's very simple. Most gyms have these same exact ones. When they're open, they look like this, and then when they're closed, they literally clip together. And then to get them off, you would press and pull. So, open it. And now you're gonna have to kind of hold the other side and just boom. And then to get it off, you would just press that red thing. These are super simple. Some gyms have different types. Some of them are a lot smaller and they're, they're so hard to pull off the bar. If you're at a gym like that, do not feel embarrassed if it's like hard for you to get one of these off. We've all been there. All right, say you want a bench press. Obviously, this is too short. My head wouldn't even fit under here. So, and sometimes we gotta get a little trial and error, but once you get it, again, count how many. So every time you go back to your gym, you know exactly where to set it. Okay, so I know this is still too short because I'm going to have to literally press a good couple inches to even get it up. Ideally, you'd want it set so you just have to slightly raise a little bit and pull it forwards. Same thing with the squat. You don't want to waste your energy unracking and re-racking it. Okay, still a little too low. The reason I know that is because if I was going to re-rack it, I'm at least two or three inches too low. Much better. And then when I'm done, I just have to hit the back and it's right there. So don't be afraid for a little bit of trial and error. Nobody's making fun of you. And if they are, then screw off. Looks like I cracked my screen protector because of this little light ray. But the seventh tip that I have for you guys that I wanna chat about is machines versus free weights. Hold on. Okay, I'm not gonna go in 
too much depth right now but for any beginner out there i think it's important to understand that there's a difference between the two they both serve different purposes i will say free weights so basically a weight that's not fixed to a machine so a barbell kettlebell dumbbell those are typically going to give you a little bit more bang for your buck we're going to get your core involved a lot more smaller stabilizing muscles whereas the machines are a really great way to isolate different muscle groups that being said say you want to grow your quad muscles you can do that via the machine you could also do it via free weights like a leg press or a quad extension or a squat thing is the squat is going to have a lot more muscles activated therefore more bang for your buck but if you just want to isolate the quad then the machine's a great way I'd recommend spending the bulk of your session on free weight work and then when you want to isolate a little bit more a machine is a really great way to do that my last tip to you guys is that you can do it. I, I want to be your motivation here for a second. The same way I started the video saying this is you versus you. It's the same way I want to end the video. It's you versus you. You have the power to show up for yourself. You don't need anybody else to do it with you. Well, although I know it can be nice to have a friend or a buddy join you for the gym. If you're in a situation right now where you have a friend or a significant other or a family member that wants to go to the gym or wants to train with you, I'm jealous of you. First of all, invite me next time. Second of all, enjoy that. If you're someone who doesn't have that, you can do it alone. I started my fitness journey 100% by myself. Not only can you do this alone, but you can do this right now. You don't even need a gym. I know in this video I talked about some tips in the gym, but if you're in a situation like I was six years ago where you're living at home or you're in high school, your parents don't have like equipment for you to use and you're not allowed to go to the gym, that was literally where I started. I literally would go for runs and I would work on calisthenics in my bedroom. I would do pistol squats, handstands, push-ups, body weight squats. I would be doing split squats with my bed as like the back foot part. You can do it, okay? You do not need everything fancy. Although having a really nice gym is a plus, you don't need that, okay? Movement can happen really from anywhere with any place with whatever equipment you have or don't have. You just need to know deep down that you can do it, you have it in you. And yeah, all of the people that you look up to in the fitness industry or just in your life, they all started somewhere. You are in that same exact spot that you are at a starting line and all of these other people were at starting lines. So yeah, this might be kind of silly for some of you guys. You might be like, yeah, I got it, shut the fuck up. Some of you though, maybe need this. Like it's, it's like a little pep talk, like the big sister pep talk or let me be like your coach when I'm talking to my clients. This is my favorite thing to explain to people that you have it in you. And it's such a weird thing that your mind holds you back from so much or we, tend to not believe in ourselves or think that other people are better than us or other people are more equipped to do xyz no 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 you've got it in you okay that's the last thing i wanted to say i really really believe in you to stick to whatever you put your mind to i know you can do it and i'm very proud of you for showing up um yeah also let me know in the comments what you thought if you're a beginner if there's anything else i missed or like little tips that you think i should add i would love to make more videos like this in the future, maybe more specific ones. So just let me know. Um, before I turn the camera off, also I wanna plug my Instagram if you want to see my face more often, more than once a week. That's how I'm posting on YouTube right now. Go to my Instagram, that's where I am all the time. Wherever you are consuming my content from, whether that's YouTube or that's Instagram, I hope that I serve value into your life. Like that is my goal. And I'm so thankful for you. Bye. Peace.